common question I've received in my inbox this week, especially with the release of Ubuntu 11.10, is what's the quickest and easiest way to upgrade or update our existing Ubuntu installation? Do we need to go back out and download the ISO file, burn a live CD, and do a fresh install, or is there some way to do the upgrade that way? Or can we just somehow force the update manager to do it ourselves? That last option is probably the quickest and easiest way to get your update if you already have Ubuntu installed. So, I will go through two methods of doing this, one method using the Ubuntu Classic theme, and one method using Unity. And we're of course using Ubuntu 11.04. Uh, so in Ubuntu Classic, to force the update manager to go out and find the update and download it for you, and get you set up, would be to go to System, Administration, Update Manager. And here's our prompt. If we decided to ask me later, or don't upgrade, the prompt will go away and we'll just see the update manager. We could go ahead and click yes, upgrade now, and that would force the upgrade. Let's go ahead and close it. If you have closed out the prompt, or if you have chose ask me later, you, you will be prompted for it later, but if you want to go ahead and force the update, you'll notice in the update manager we have several sections here. The first section we'll notice is the top. It says new Ubuntu release 11.10 is available. You can click the button to go ahead and force the upgrade. Uh, you also notice the bottom half, I'm a little outdated. I need to install some updates, but anyways, to go ahead and force the update, simply click the upgrade button. I'll close. Log out, and we're going to go back into Unity. We'll go into stock Ubuntu. That includes Unity. We'll log in. Now the purpose behind using both Ubuntu Classic and the standard Ubuntu 11.04 with Unity included is some of the things have been moved around in Unity from where they are in the regular just Ubuntu Classic. So we'll go ahead and launch into Unity and we will force the update manager to do the update this way. I suppose the easiest way to find the update manager would be to search for it on the dash, which it is. Click update manager and you notice we can already see that the update manager does in fact see the new Ubuntu update is floating around out there. So we will click upgrade. We get the release notes. You can read through these if you like. It'll tell you what's been changed, some of the bug information, uh, where you can go for follow-up information and for support as well. We'll go ahead and click upgrade. And now the update process has started. Now we can pretty much let it ride. Uh, it will go through the update and set itself up. When you come back, you should be running Ubuntu 11.10. You have to enter your password to make sure that you want to go ahead and force the update. You can see we have a, a status bar here that's stepping us through the distribution upgrade. I do recommend before doing any upgrade that you do make sure you have all of your files backed up. Um, whether you have a USB hard drive or a flash drive or burn them to a CD or even if you're using Ubuntu 1 uh, to sync your files back to the cloud. I do recommend that you have your, your music, any any other documents, any other files uh, that you've created, pictures, things of that nature. You need to have all those backed up. Uh, that's, a, that's a big deal because something could go wrong. You could hose your system if you do something really wrong. But the whole point of the in-place upgrade is to be as, as hassle-free as possible. Yeah, it does take a little bit of time, but it doesn't require a whole lot of intervention while it's being run. So with that being said, uh, feel free to hold on tight and we will fast forward through this and we will see you here in just a second once the, once the installation is complete. Now one thing you will see just right before the upgrade starts is you're going to get one more confirmation box. And this box is going to ask you if you really want to do the upgrade. It's going to let you know how many packages are no longer supported by Canonical. In this case it's 53. It will also let you know how many packages are going to be removed, how many packages will be installed from being new, and how many will be upgraded. So in this case, 26 packages are going to be removed, 275 new packages are going to be installed, and 1,251 packages are going to be upgraded. It also gives you an approximate idea of how much data you're going to have to download. In this case, it's going to be 836 megs of download data. Uh, it'll also estimate roughly a time. We all know that computer download time is, is an estimate. It's not exact. Uh, so this could actually be a little, little better than an hour and 24 minutes or it could be a little quicker than an hour and 24 minutes, all depending on your broadband internet connection. It will also let you know that fetching this information could take a little while. Once the download has finished, 
you cannot cancel the update. Prior to the download being finished, you can cancel the update. It will also give you one last note to close all applications and documents. That way you'll prevent any kind of data loss. Click details and it gives you pretty much all that information in a list form. It will let you know exactly what packages will be installed, no longer needed. So you can see there's these three packages are no longer going to be needed. No longer supported by Canonical. You can scroll through here and see what packages are no longer supported and we can click on remove and lastly upgrade will give you a whole list of all the all the packages that are going to be upgraded during this installation so once we're certain we want to go ahead with the upgrade we'll click start upgrade and we'll let it roll welcome back you can notice that we now have one more prompt this prompt is asking us about removing obsolete packages as you can see, in my case, I'll have 72 packages that will be removed. We can also click in the details box so we can see which ones will be taken off, which ones will be removed as the installation completes. For more information, you can click on each one of these. You can go through and you can figure out what they are if you like. In my situation, I'm going to go ahead and just take the option to remove. You can notice down at the bottom of the box, we have the option to keep them or we can remove them. I'm going to go ahead and just take remove. You can notice we now have our little status box back. The last two steps are cleaning up the installation and restarting the computer. If you want to see what's going on in the background, you can click the terminal drop down. And that'll actually open up a little terminal session in the bottom of that status box and let you see what's going on in the background as if you were running a separate terminal session or from a command line type environment. So I tell you what, we'll go ahead and we'll skip through the rest of this. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's basically just a waiting game from this point on. And we will, here in just a few minutes, we'll have our fresh Ubuntu 11.10 setup. Alright, now we're finally greeted with our restart button. If you go ahead and click the restart button, it'll force the machine to go ahead and do its restart. And you'll be booted up into the Ubuntu login screen. You'll notice some things have changed with this login screen. The login prompt has been moved to the left side of the screen. Down on the bottom left corner, we have our Ubuntu logo. Now we also, you notice I'm circling my mouse around the options button. You have your computer name up in the top left corner. Over in the top right, you have your accessibility options. You have your volume icon. You also have your calendar and your clock next to that. And you also you also have your shutdown button, where you can suspend Hibernator shutdown. And as mentioned a moment ago, the options button allows you to choose another desktop environment to boot into. So do check our next video. We will discuss what's a little different with Unity and uh, why, why we have issues with Ubuntu Classic in Ubuntu 11.10. So thanks for watching.